this is a memorable studio moment. Something people probably don't know. My second album, um, Baptized in Dirty Water, was actually created and done in one month. Honestly, now that I'm older, I think that that was, either, even, even though some people say that's their favorite album, especially people from the country, because that was my hardest album. That was my roughest album. That was what, what people would consider, I think, my most street album. So I was in a really bad place at that time, spiritually. But I recorded that album in one month. All of the features, I a and would the album, I produced most of the album, but this was the studio moment. And actually, really, Universal pushed me to do that album um, so they can, you know, end off the tax year right. You know, now that I'm a businessman, I saw what they were doing, they were really playing me. Um, but I was so competitive, and I was thinking in my mind, like, I'm the label, I'm the producer, I'm the rapper, like, like I could be super aggressive, and I can do more than the rest of these rappers because I'm the producer too. So let me put some heat on. What he really did was knock the wind and the momentum out of Mississippi the album. Cause think about it, Mississippi the album was gold and we really only dropped two singles off of that. And Cadillac on 22s was really like my repayment to, to the most high. Cause I, I prayed, I said, God, if you let me be successful without having to borrow money from dope dealers or or me having to sell dope myself. I said, like, if you can, like, help me make it, I'll repay you and I'll praise your name in front of the world. And what people don't know is Cadillac on 22s was a prayer and a thank you to God. God, I know that we pimp. God, I know that we wrong. God, I know I should talk about more than all of my songs because my theory was after, like, a pimp blew, I better pay back God now because I, <laughs> you know, I don't know if I'm going to have another single. I said, so let me repay God now because I didn't really know if I was going to have another opportunity. But the studio moment was this. Well, Steve Rifkin is the uh, owner and the CEO of Loud Records. Wu-Tang, 3-6 Mafia, uh, Exhibit, Big Pun, Mob Deep, um, and now Akon, myself. I was the first artist, or well, not the first artist, Granddaddy South was the first artist, but I was the first artist to really get some mainstream success for SRC, Steve Rifkin's um, label. Steve Rifkin had bought or rented out four studios in New York. We had three rooms in Sony, and we had one studio in the Hit Factory. And what was happening is, in one studio, I was making the beats, and the studio next to it, I was rapping. And then the third studio in Sony, we had one mixer there, and then we had another mixer across the street. So literally, I knocked out a whole album in one month. There was times where I didn't sleep in um, 42 hours. But the studio moment, this was also a fuck it moment too, because I had my whole crew in there. I wouldn't go to sleep and nobody was coming up with hooks. My homies wouldn't even run to the store for me. So like, I was literally doing the whole album by myself. And I was sitting around and all these people are sleeping, all these people are drinking, you know, women from New York falling through. And I'm like, dude, y'all not gonna write no hook. Y'all not gonna help. You know what? Fuck it. I'm on it. And it hurt my feelings because like all this pressure was on me. I even now realize this. And this is no knock on any of the people that were around me at the time, but it was like they were benefiting more off my career than I was. Because I was working and they were having fun and drinking and eating for free. You know, I was just asking people like, man, write a hook, sing something, you know, give me an idea, give me some inspiration, open up a Playboy book and show me some titties, anything. But nobody did it. But that, that moment was memorable to me because I think I made history. Like, I literally did a whole album, full features from Scarface to Devin and all of that in literally a month. I do the beat, write the verse, spit the verse in the second room, and it was literally like a, a, a assembly line. The crazy thing about it is it showed me that I really, you know, I, I love people and I do need help and we do need these collaborations, but at the end of the day, it's my fault. You know, I told y'all yesterday when we were speaking in Chicago that it's my fault even when it's not my fault. And whether people acknowledge me or not, I did something that most people can't do. 
I was really a record label because they didn't A&R me. I paid, like, for the most part, my features and all that. Kind of, I did all of that. They didn't give me the check at the end of the day. That's something that I'm proud of. My studio moment, whether people acknowledge that, whether people give me high fives or not, like, I did something that wasn't human. And honestly, I got to say now, and, and, and I made the decision to do it, so I'm not judging anybody, but, like, motherfuckers work me. And motherfuckers work me like a slave because they, they took my competitiveness and, and used it against me. Like, I wasn't sleeping. You know, I, I had a song on that album called My Lord. I was so drunk and so high because it was so much pressure on me that literally they stood the mic up. I remember uh, Slim Thug came through the studio that night. I was so drunk. And if you listen to the song, I said, I'm so drunk and high. They pushed the, the mic up against the wall and I literally rapped the song like on the wall. I think that was that was my studio moment and my fucking moment. At the same time, it was sort of like a conglomerate effort. It's something different, you know what I mean, from what we used to seeing in the South. You know, they made Atlanta proud. They made the South proud. They wasn't following the trend. If I could talk to the young Ron Artest, I would tell him to stay out of the the projects where you're not supposed to be at doing, you know, stuff that you're not supposed to be doing. I probably put my first verse in there, that's all. And like, he brought everybody who was in the studio in there to listen to it after I was done. Tyler, the creator, uh, Jeremiah. And I don't even think that he talked on anybody else's record besides mine's. So I had made sure that I got yams on the song. It was gonna either be yams or Puff Daddy. And I got yams on there. 